record. Hello, welcome to another episode of Holly D Live. I'm Holly D. And <laughs> sorry, somebody just sent me a text and said I got a little drunk last night. Hell yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Welcome to Heavy Mental. Uh, I like, this is like my favorite podcast because I usually do it by myself and I talk about subjects that are really hard for us to talk about. Not like, I mean, I have a political podcast or whatever, not, you know, not like abortion or, you know, those are hard, those are controversial subjects, but, um, you know, like deep shit, relationships, things that hurt, getting through pain, getting through trauma. And today I'm going to talk about self-esteem. Um, let's look up the definition here per Google because that's all I freaking do is Google shit. Self-esteem is an individual's subjective evaluation of their own worth. Let's see. The three types of self-esteem. Ooh, you learn something new every day. Ooh, I'm going to click on this. Okay, just to cite it, it's from cmbankng.com. I'm just clicking on stuff, guys. Three major types to be aware of. Self-esteem. It says self-esteem is a person's general sense of their self-worth or value. It basically... Okay. Um, Am I still recording? Yeah. Yeah, it's recording still. It basically... What does it say? It basically means the measure with which a person... Okay, dude, which with a person approves or values his or herself. Morris Rosenberg simply described it as a person's favorable, unfavorable attitude towards themselves. Different factors contribute to influence our self-esteem, such as genetics, personalities, life experiences, thoughts, age, health, comparing self to others, social circumstances, and the reaction of others. I like that. Why is self-esteem important? Self-esteem is very crucial in life as it is one of the, the determinants of success or failure. It is very important because it influences a person's life choices. It plays a significant role in one's motivation in life. Having a high self-esteem can help you navigate through life with a positive attitude and outlook. On the other hand, having a low self-esteem might hold you back from achieving to your goals and hinder you from maximizing your potential as you will navigate through life always having the perception that you are not good enough or that you don't have what it takes to succeed both at school or work. Self-esteem is very important for mental health. Okay, types of self-esteem. There are three types. Low self-esteem. People who have low self-esteem think of themselves as below average. They do not believe in themselves. They do not trust in their abilities, and they do not place value on themselves. Low self-esteem can affect a lot of things in one's life. Some of the effects of low self-esteem are poor relationships, addiction, depression, anxiety. Sorry, I'm slapping my leg when I get off of this. I I always do that. See, that's genetic. That comes from my dad. Uh, Poor relationships. Low self-esteem causes poor relationships because of self-doubt and the belief that one is not good enough for anything of value and going to unbelievable lengths to please the wrong people. I'm going to fucking get in on that too. Addiction. This is what I have a problem with. People who have low self-esteem mostly tend to use hard drugs and substances to ease the negative feeling they have about themselves. They see the use of hard drugs or alcohol as an escape and thereby exposing themselves to detrimental effects. Depression and anxiety. Low self-esteem also causes depression and anxiety, which is the feeling of sadness and worry or fear. Low self-esteem brings a lack of confidence that leads to anxiety and intense sadness. Okay, second type, high self-esteem. People who have high self-esteem tend to love and accept themselves. That's what I'm working on now. They believe in themselves and their abilities. 
they have the confidence that whatever challenges might come, they might be able to surpass it. Some of the benefits of high self-esteem include being able to be yourself without the fear of being judged, readiness to accept new challenges, not always searching for approval from other people, readiness to learn new things as you accept that you do not know everything, and also take corrective criticism. People who have high self-esteem have enhanced initiatives and pleasant feelings, and they are more pleasant to be around. And then the third type is inflated self-esteem. I don't know about this one. People with inflated self-esteem tend to think of themselves as better, excuse me, than other people and are always ready to underestimate others. This is actually a very negative type of self-esteem because it prevents people who have it from forming meaningful and healthy relationships. They always want to be ahead and most times do not mind hurting people to achieve the success they desire, thinking that will bring them happiness. People with inflated self-esteem do not have the ability to listen to others. Rather, they constantly blame others and undervalue them and also adopt a hostile attitude and behavior toward others. They're always ready to brag to hide their incompetence and they have a great fear of rejection and failure, hence the reason they feel the need to camouflage. People like this can change, but it has to start with them accepting it. They need to realize that they are humans who are prone to make mistakes. Generally, self-esteem is one of the determinants of excellence in life. That was great, man. Good website. So, I was reading, uh, I mean, I've been studying this. It's called The Mind Connection. It's about, I mean, it's a, it's Joyce Meyer or whatever, but, and she does like cite verses, talks about God a little bit, but if it's not your cup of tea, I understand that. Um, but she talks about how your outlook, how your thoughts affect your physical and mental health, how your thoughts affect your outlook on life, how your thoughts determine everything. And thoughts really tie into self-esteem, you know, about, you know, if you think like if you get up one day or you get up every day and you're like, well, I can't do it. Well, I'm not going to be able to do it. Well, I just can't. Well, then you won't because you don't believe in yourself. <clears throat> I'm, I have bipolar disorder, so I go from low self-esteem to high self-esteem, like in back and forth and back and forth. Um, uh, I mean, it's just, I think people don't have self-esteem because of things they've gone through in life. Like they said, you know, relationships or you're, you know, you get to an age where you think that it's just all over for you and that you can't have fun anymore. And that's for young people and blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. I don't think so. I have a blast all the time, but I think people are like, people either have low self-esteem or they're cocky as hell. I swear to God. Like they think their shit don't stink. Like it was talking about inflated self-esteem. They think their shit doesn't stink. Like, I mean, I was incarcerated not that long ago with somebody who was like, well, my dad's getting me out and I don't need to know anything because I'm going to be gone and you're stupid if you go to jail twice and I'm above it. No, you're not above it. You're in there with everybody else. Welcome to reality. You know, sometimes I would just want to slap people in the face until they get it, but I, I'm not violent, so I'm not going to do that. And it's not my job, you know. I mean, one day they'll wake up or they won't. But they'll have a horrible quality of life. I'm sick of hating myself. I've done it for too long, man. Abusing myself, destructing myself, self-destructing this. It just makes things worse, so why not just do better and be better and go in a positive direction? I believe that you can get yourself out of any circumstance. I was homeless for a very long time, and I'm not homeless now. And it took me a long time to get out of that homeless mindset, too. Because of the hustling and stuff that goes with it all day. But, you know, I mean... I had low self-esteem then. Um, 
just believe in yourself, guys. You know, I think people people are like, what's the? I'm about to I'm about to Google it. I'm about to Google it, guys. Hold hold on. According to Elite Daily, conceited people are often insecure and overcompensate by taking compliments as a given, when in reality, they crave the praise to feed their self-esteem levels. Wow. Someone who is self-confident appreciates praise, but is not desperate for it. Oh, yeah. I think I'm getting that back. I'm getting to that point. Where I don't need constant assurance. You know, like I, I I recognize a lot of a lot of my bad traits, and I still have bad traits, but I'm trying to shed them. I'm trying to um to get my life back. I'm trying to do my music and my comedy and be sober. And I'm not trying to do a bunch of things at once. I just want to concentrate on one thing at a time and then everything will come into place. But just believe in yourself, everybody, you know, um, just because you have self-esteem or you're confident does not mean that, that you're conceited. What else does it say? Or arrogance. Okay, this is from emeraldworks.com slash blog slash something something. Uh, It says, let's start by defining both terms. Confidence is a feeling of self-assurance that comes from an appreciation of our abilities or qualities. Arrogance is characterized by having an exaggerated sense of our importance or abilities. Okay, so they take it and run with it if you're arrogant. Huh. How do I stop being so conceited? These are things that people put in Google. To avoid coming across as arrogant, we need to make changes to how we think, what we say, and how we act. This is from HTTPS dot blah, 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 backslash, backslash socialpronow.com slash blog slash something. How not how to not be arrogant but still be confident in parentheses. Social pro. Don't try to make people like you through achievements. Ooh, that's a good one. Try to see the value in everyone. I I really try that. Focus your attention outwards. Engage in small talk and listen. Ah, small talk's hard for me. But I still do it just as a, as a courtesy to most people. Just because, I don't know. Ask for immediate feedback. Be warm. Collaborate. Don't dominate. Very cool. Let's see. Embrace self-love over conceitedness. The fine line between confidence and conceit. Doer's Empire. Yes, this is what we need. Cited from HTTPS colon black, backslash backslash www.doersempire.com blah 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 blah. Here we go. The fine line between confidence and conceit. Confidence or conceit. Confidence is a great feeling to have, but too much confidence leads to becoming overconfident. What is the difference between confidence and conceit then? The conceit is also known as vain pride, and it usually results from overly high self-esteem, which if you're not able to tell, is bad for your progress as a successful human being. Nothing is wrong with believing in you. You should always feel good about yourself and believe in yourself. The problem only starts when you take it to a whole different level and your confidence goes into overdrive, causing you to believe that you are literally the best. That, my friend, is conceit. Conceit, for example, I know everyone loves me. Um, 
Yeah, it says that it can be fixed if you um if you can't decide between the two and you're trying to be less conceited. All you need to do is ask yourself about the origin of your confidence. Are you really that good at everything or are you literally the best? <laughs> or is it just that your defense mechanism overcompensating for your weakness? Here's 10 pointers that can help you realize how much of a pain you are for people around you or not. Just be honest with yourself. Okay, you always have to do better than everyone else. Um, oh, gosh. You, oh, do you know people like this? These stinking one-uppers. Seriously, you need to chill. You can't always be the best, and frankly, there's no need to. Often, you have to make up a way cooler story, that was in parentheses, after you listen to someone's cool story or learn about their abilities. You always have to be the best story, don't you? You're always right. You guys hear me? Oh, I hope you're hearing me. You are always freaking right. If someone does not agree, they're wrong. No one can be a more authentic source of information than you, right? I mean, you obviously know more about everything than everyone else. You often find yourself arguing with people about things you don't even know because you just don't want to end up losing. God, my ex was like that. In a conversation, you speak more than you listen. I used to do this, but I've learned to listen and now I just want to listen all the time. You have something much more important to say than the person who is speaking, and you just can't wait till they finish speaking. So you interrupt them. Uh, you can't ask for anyone's help. Yeah. You need the help, but you can't ask for it. Um, you deserve all the credit. Always. When you always single-handedly make everything happen. Teamwork doesn't exist. You did all the work and there's no reason for you to mention other people who were in your group. It was just you. And how dare someone criticize you? Um, you don't accept constructive criticism. You think it's bullshit. Uh, you're so great that everyone is just jealous of you. Got the... Yeah, yeah, I'm getting it. Um, you're not like most people. You are one of a kind... Um, you always come first, no matter what. Your world starts from you, takes two trips around the universe, and ends on you. In every situation, you always think about yourself first. Um, you just don't care. No matter what you do, you don't even care how it might affect other people. That's their problem. Rude, condescending, and insulting are your three best qualities. Your level above everyone else. How to fix you. Here is how. Um... Yeah, it, it just takes, I think it takes, you know, um, I still have so much to learn and I'm excited to learn from people. I'm excited to learn things and to know all about anything, but I don't know all about everything. I, I can't even begin to tell you all the mistakes I've made, like, and the mistakes I still make. But, you know, just because we make mistakes doesn't mean we have to be tortured forever. Nani, just saying. <sighs> um, and you know, <sighs> when somebody doesn't want you that you really want, and they know that you want them, that can affect your self esteem. That's my situation. Um, yeah, you all know that Nani and mine's breakup just hit me the hardest. I fell off into space. I think I just now came back to the planet. Um, that's how gone I've been. And I've done some not so nice things. I wasn't respectful to her. So I get it. I get it why she hates me. I get it why she has no no feelings of animosity or she you know, I get it. I get it. I disgust her and I know this. And the only reason I know this is not because I I'm getting it from other people. 
It's because I know. I can feel her energy. She's my twin flame. And she will always be my twin flame. And I know it sucks. I know it sucks to be her because I'm her person and I'm just a horrible person and all that. But I'm uh, that's my person. And maybe everybody's like, well, no, it's not because she'll never take you back. Then then if I found, listen, I want to make this abundantly clear. If I have found my person, nobody can tell me that I need to get over it and move on. Because trust me, I've tried. And there is no moving on. For her, good for her. I want her to be happy. I want her son to be happy. I want her whole freaking family to be happy. But if I don't, if I, I mean, I, I just met someone when I was incarcerated that I had feelings for, and that's the first person since Nani, and that didn't work out. It's, we're squashed. You know, it's done, and at the end of the day, I'm not comparing everybody else to her, but that's how good she was, guys. When I say she's the best, I'm not in, you know, I, she was the best. She is the best. She's an amazing person. In, in, you know, I mean, like my, one of my friends brought up an interesting point, you know, when you never talk to your exes again. No, yeah, that's true. You never talk to your exes again. And for the first time, I think in a long time, like when, when it really hit me, I asked God or ever spirit source, whatever, everything in the universe. Why? Why won't she take me back? Why? Why can't I, you know? And it's because it's the first time ever that I didn't get what I wanted. You know? I had a spiritual awakening of sorts about, uh, about a, two years back. And I was a selfish person. I still deal with that. I, I was very blowhardish. I was arrogant. I was a lot of things. And now I try to be more caring and compassionate. And um, she taught me how to love. Because she showed me unconditional love. And I didn't know it uh, before her. And I freaked out. And I uh, talk about doing everything wrong. If you ever feel bad about something you've done in a relationship, just message me because <laughs> I mean everything you could do wrong. I lied to her about everything in my life. I lied to her because I was a compulsive liar and I've been doing it since I was eight years old. And, and uh, I mean, it just got out of control. And part of being truthful and being honest with yourself and part of self-esteem is knowing when it Lies hurt, man. And I, I just said no more. You know, I mean, I, I have a support group for it that I go to sometimes, you know, when I, when I want to talk about it, it's called uh daily strength. And, um, it really helps, but yeah. Oh crap, I gotta plug my phone in. But yeah, just believe in yourself, guys. And and I'm sorry. I'm sorry I went off tip about you know my ex, but I deal with that every day. It's I mi I'm miserable. And it's not because I don't have her, it's because I'm not good enough for her, even so. No, you know, but that's my self-esteem talking. You know what I'm saying? We all struggle with things, and I just want to let you know that you're not alone. That's all I ever want you guys to know is that don't go at it alone. Because even though I, I mean, I live alone, things like that, I don't feel, I felt lonely today. But I don't necessarily feel like I'm all by myself. I have friendships. 
And I have people that love me, man, and care about me. And they don't care if I lied. And they're not going to throw it in my face. And they're not going to just do something to spite me. And they're, you know. But that's the one lesson I learned in this life. Like, I don't deal with regret because... In Natural Born Killers, he said it's a waste of emotion, and I agree with him. Regret and worry. <laughs> it serves no purpose. And that doesn't mean that I'm not sad about what I've done. That I don't feel bad about it. I feel horrible uh, remorse. I deal with it every day. And it haunts me. But I don't let it get in the way of my day. Does that make any sense? You know, I'm going to pee. I just don't care. Like I said, this is an improv. And uh, I don't I don't stop this. I rarely stop this for nothing. Sometimes I'll pause it and I won't come back and I'll forget about it. Just because I, I go squirrel. But, um, you know... I don't know, guys. Even if nobody listens to this, this is therapy for myself. And, you know, sometimes, like, I don't want to write it down. I want to say it out loud, man. Like, with tone. And I want to say it strong. And I want to get it out of me, man. So I don't have to think about it all the time. And keep it all pent up inside me. You know? I loved Nani. I loved her. I did love her. I was mean to her. I was disrespectful to her. At times, I, I could have mentally abused her and did not mean to, but nor know it. But it's possible that I did. And I know what I've done now. And I know what hurts people. And that your actions do affect other people. And I've changed because of it. And if I didn't have that, if I didn't have that spiritual awakening because of the breakup with Nani, I don't know where I'd be right now, man. I'd be some fucking blowhard, you know? Just walking around the bar being a fucking cat lady. And I'm cool with being a dog lady, man. You know, I keep my heart open for other relationships, but there hasn't been one for me. Not since her. And I'm sorry, but I will always compare them to her. And she cannot be touched in that area. She was the best. She was supportive of everything. She was trusting. She was uh, a badass. She was, she's just, she's a catch. And anybody who's with her should be lucky to have her. And God, seriously, God bless her. I don't care what she's done to me, what she said about me, what she's, I don't care. You know, God only knows what the fuck that is, but. You know, I say what I got to say in these fucking podcasts. And if you don't like it, then fucking go to another podcast. Because I don't give a shit. I'm not the best and I'm not a fucking professional. I'm not a psychologist, nor am I licensed. I'm not a therapist. I go to therapy. I'm just trying to get through life the same way everybody else is. You know, and uh, and it's hard. Because... I never thought I would have a family. And I finally get one. God finally gives me one. And I fuck it up so bad that I'll never have it again. Like, not like that. <sighs> she deserves better than me. She does. There's still some things that I struggle with that I can't get rid of because of the loneliness and because I do think of her every day. There's always something that reminds me of her, whether it's music or a painting or a fucking 
somebody's resting bitch face or something, you know? She was just... It took her to leave me and never come back for me to realize how much I loved her. (sighs) It's time to face it, you know? I've been running from this for years and I'm sick of it. I gotta get through this. You know, I uh, I go to therapy every Tuesday now, so hopefully that will help, But and the crying will get less. But until then, I've got these podcasts. I've got you. And if nobody listens to this, period, I don't give a fuck, because this is for me, too. It's, it's for all of you, but I mean, I can't even tell you, like... How much it hurts. I can't even put into words the pain. Like, um. I, I don't, I don't even know. I, I don't even know. I, I know I love her. I miss her. I mistreated her. And I'm sorry. Um, I wasn't ready then. I was a child. You know, her child behaved more mature than I did. I mean, Fuck. Holly, Jesus Christ, you're an immature motherfucker. But that comes, that ties into my spiritual awakening. Like, I learned why am I so the way that I am? Why am I the way that I am? What the fuck is wrong with me? And it's family. It's my blood family. It's the way that they are. They are fucking... Um... I don't want to bad mouth my blood family. But they can be extremely overbearing. They try to control everything in life. They have to know everything about everything. And here's three things that I did that you should never do in a relationship. That I'm never going to do again. Do not throw shit back in their face. That serves no purpose. And that means that when you guys said you were going to drop it, obviously somebody didn't drop it anyway. That'll ruin it. You bring other people into your relationship. And I'm talking about, I'm not talking about threesome, whatever. I'm talking about you listen to people's opinions and shit and let them get in on it. So now you've got all these voices in your heads like, Oh, in their their opinions. Even if it's your blood family. Don't listen. If you love them, then you fucking love them. And you fucking stand up for it. Like I should have. Um, and the third one is uh, never lie to your partner. Just don't lie to them. If you slept with somebody, be honest. Don't go sneaking around. Because when you have an affair, or when they you find out that they've been fucking somebody, like, way, way, way too soon, which is what I did too, uh, then fucking... It's not about... I don't think it's much... I don't think it's much about... Uh, so much about the cheating, then the, the trust is broken. There's no trust now because you snuck around and fucking lied to him. I know the truth hurts, dude, but had I would have been honest about even one thing, one thing with her, it might not have been so bad for her. Might not have been so bad for me. 
And I tore her apart. I know. She told me. You know, she said, you fucking destroyed me. Well, I'll tell you what, bitch. You destroyed me, too. I am fucking gutted. And I know it doesn't matter because I deserve it. I know I deserve it. And I don't want your pity, anybody's pity. I, I deserve to be miserable for what I've done. I'm paying the karmic price for what I've done. And I accept that, that I did wrong and I can't do nothing about it. And I'll probably never see her again. And if I do, she'll turn around and walk the other way. Or say something or do something that I'll think about for the rest of my life. And, and, <laughs> and I'll, be, I'll be heartbroken. Forever. I mean, I, I, um, uh, <laughs> it's not even heartbreak. It's like, sh I'm, sh I'm, I feel shattered. I feel shattered by it. And it's been almost four fucking years. And I'm not going to let her go. I'll never fucking let her go because a I just I I tried to let her go and I can't I talked to God about it I tried to move on emotionally I've, tr I've been close to people and intimate with people since her and I'm very and uh there it's not um they, it's not those butterflies and maybe I haven't met somebody, but it's like, she was it for me. She was it. Now somebody else is going to be with her, or somebody else probably already is with her, I assume. I don't ask anybody about how Nani's doing because it would shatter me to, to know who she's with, what she's up to, what the fuck is she doing. I can't know. I just don't want to know. I tried to talk to her like last week or whatever. And I said, are you ready to talk? And she said, uh, what the fuck does that mean? You know? So she's like, I don't even know what that means. And then she didn't even read my shit, but that's cool. Like that's fine. Cause she probably, she probably thinks here comes an avalanche of bullshit because that's how much Holly fucking lied to me. And I just don't give a fuck about her anymore. I, I get that. I did stuff for attention, all sorts of stupid shit. It's just, wow, man. And negative t attention is still attention, guys. So, if, if you can't be happy with your motherfucker, guess what? I guess us in human nature, we just want to fucking fight. We just want to fucking fight with them. And that's totally unhealthy for any relationship. And I, I mean, I didn't fight. I had problems with addiction back then. You know, I mean, I was, it wasn't on uh, hardcore drugs or anything like that, but it was just, oh man, it was just a lot. And I am going to publish this because somebody out there might be shattered too. And I just want to let you know, if you... If you can move on, go to therapy or whatever, good for you. But once I found it, honey, that, <laughs> that's all I want. I just want my fucking family back. But I got to earn them back. And maybe I'll never earn them back. But I got to try. Because it, when you stop dreaming... It's time to die. Believe in yourselves. Self-esteem like a motherfucker. It's Holly D signing out. Have a great night. I've got a big week ahead of me, but I'll try and get these podcasts out as soon as possible. Thanks for listening to Heavy Mental and have a great day. Bye-bye.